It's another raw video from your favorite YouTube scout, Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I'm finally here making another video. And like I said, it's a raw one, so there will be no edits. Anyway, I'm trying to get a little bit of situated right now. Like I said, there will be no edits in this video. So you're just going to get pure rawness. Let me get myself situated to where I need to be. And here we go. As you can tell by the title, this is the Minnesota Vikings 2018 draft forecast. Now, what a draft forecast is, if you are a fan of the Vikings and you've never seen any of my videos, a draft forecast is basically kind of forecasting where draft picks will be years down the road. Usually, we give draft classes about three years until we actually know. Now, in this type of series that I'm doing for each and every team in the NFL, I will be looking at all the draft picks and then examining them, studying them, and pretty much giving you who I think will be the biggest bust, the biggest boom, and the steal of the draft. And to put it into retrospect, for the biggest bust and the biggest boom pick, I will be looking at the first three rounds. So if your team, you know, First, second, third round, chose a player. I'll be looking at the biggest, who will probably be the biggest bust out of those three players. Now, also, if they didn't, let's say they didn't have a first round pick or a second round pick or a third round pick, I will incorporate the fourth round guys in it if they're kind of missing a player or if in this situation for the Minnesota Vikings, if I feel as though the first, you know, the first couple of picks, I actually, you know, kind of like and don't think don't think that those players will be busts. Then I'll look at the next picks after that and see where it goes. But overall, that's how I'm going to try to do it. And then the biggest steal for the draft is basically, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round. Should be fourth round. But in the case for the Minnesota Vikings, this is how I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to start off with the biggest boom pick in this draft. And I feel as though it's going to be your first round pick, Mike Hughes. The reason why I feel as though it's going to be Mike Hughes. And before I really get into it, shout out to subscriber Alan Atkins. He's been waiting for this video. I finally got been able to do it. I'm pretty busy right now going back to school, uh, learning um, HVAC and stuff like that. But that doesn't matter. This is about the draft, and I'm draft for authentic. So let's get into Mike Hughes. Hughes. Mike Hughes, I, who I thought was the best corner in this draft class, period. I didn't think that there was any corner that was better than him. Duh, the best corner in the draft. But um, honestly, when it came to guys like Denzel Ward or Jair Alexander, um, I just felt as though he was a little bit better in certain categories than those players. Now, on my cornerback list I actually had Hughes as number one and Jair Alexander number two Denzel Ward was like my number three maybe number four I gotta really go back and look at uh the cornerback situation but um I had that's how I had my list and the reason why Mike Hughes was so much higher is that he's played every game he played every game this season um you can see the natural hips and feet and ball skills, but one of his biggest things is his ability to ta the ability to tackle. And that was one of the biggest things that really caught my eye when it came to him was that he was a complete corner. There was nothing that this dude couldn't do. Yeah, he's a little bit undersized, but when I naming those other corners, they're all a little bit undersized. Now, looking at it in retrospect, if I take away the tape and I look at measurables and combine situations, Denzel Ward and Jair will probably definitely be higher than him. And the reason why I'm talking about it in this situation is because that could be one of the reasons why Mike Hughes actually dropped all the way to the 30th pick. Um, it was a little weird for me. I thought he should have been the the second corner off the board, period. But it was, it was was I was shocked that he actually dropped in you know to the 30th pick a late first round pick um and it could have been some of the the measurables and the combine time and I'm not a huge person when it comes to 40 times but that could have been part of it but the other big reason why he actually dropped was because of the off the field uh uh incidents and questions and stuff like that I forgot what team he used to play for but I believe he got in a fight and that's why he had to transfer to UCF 
which is probably one of the biggest reasons, like I said, why he dropped in the draft. But when it, when you look at it, all said and done, he's the biggest boom pick and will be, to me, the best corner in this draft class. Now, moving on to who I think is going to be the biggest bust. I believe, and I put two players in the situations. One of the players, I'm actually... Not to say I'm a huge fan of this player, but I feel as though they do have a chance to actually be pretty good in this league. Another player, it has to be a situation where all their skills hone in. And then eventually they, they probably would be good. But to me, when it comes to bust factor, they're, they have a chance to be a bigger bust than the other player. So let me just start with one of the one of these players, and that is Brian O'Neill. I like Brian O'Neill a lot. I think that he has a chance to being one of the better tackles in this draft class. Um, I don't think he's a Pro Bowl tackle, but I, I would say that he is a solid starting tackle. Now, I read something that said that he was probably going to be playing right guard, and it was a little weird to me because you're looking at you're looking at him as a player. You're like. You know, six foot six, thirty four inch arms, all that. It's like, huh, guard? Like that's not going to fit a skill set. And then also on top of that, he's the type of guy that he's not. He doesn't have the greatest functional strength. So it's one of those situations where it's like playing an interior alignment, and you're not really like strong. That's a weird situation to be in, and that's where I think that he could bust at. Now, also was reading up on it as well as that he could still turn out to being a right tackle for the Minnesota Vikings, where I think is a more natural position. I think that he does have a skill set to play left tackle, but I can understand not putting him at the left tackle position, being as though you got these very good hybrid-type pass rushers that are coming into the league each and every year, and they're getting better, stronger, faster than ever. And for him to try to handle that, his feet can handle it, but the question is, can his upper body strength handle it? That's going to be the biggest question when it comes to him. But to me, he's a very serviceable right tackle. Reminds me a little bit of like a Eugene Monroe. Eugene Monroe had solid feet, but functional strength wasn't that great. But he carved out at least 10 years or 10 seasons within the league. So that's 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 a good thing when it comes to a guy like him. And I think that that's what Brian O'Neill could be. Now, with the also with being the other bus pick, the one I really think have a better chance of being a bus, and that is Jalen Holmes, defensive end from Ohio State. I wasn't a big fan of a lot of the Ohio State defensive ends, the, the Tyquan Lewis's or the Sam Hubbard. Really wasn't a big fan. But when it came to uh and and when it came to Jalen Holmes, I uh, what definitely wasn't a big fan. Um, I can say this. I like Tyquan Lewis a little bit more than the other two, but those two, I just uh, it didn't. They didn't do it for me. And when I see uh, Jalen Holmes, and I just look at him as a guy that's very athletic, that has a skill set that he could become a a really good pass rusher. But it's one of those things where it's like he could very well just end up being just a regular old defensive end, and nothing really goes on for him. Um, Hopefully he can carve out his career to be better than what I think. But if you talk about if if you if you're wondering, not talking about if you're wondering who I think is the biggest bust in this draft for this draft class period, it will be Jalen Holmes. And then last but not least, the steal of this draft, um, subscriber that I shouted out, Alan Atkins actually put me on to him. I was looking at um and it's the tight end Tyler Con Conklin. Just want to put that out there. I was uh, when I was looking at numbers to look at tape for tight ends, the ones that didn't have the best production, I didn't really look at as much, and I didn't pay attention to as much, and that's my fault. I should have I should have done better with that type of situation. So, I um what actually happened is is that he sh told me about him, and I decided you know what let me go watch him because it's it's my fault I didn't actually look at. Him. Sorry. This guy was a way better tight end than what his numbers would suggest. And just like a lot of tight ends that was kind of in this draft for over the years, their ability suggests that they are better players than what we give them credit for. And so when it comes to a guy like Tyler Conklin, you know, being behind a guy like a Kyle Rudolph, He's going to be able to learn and to really try to hone his craft as a uh, as a pass catcher. Um, 
you know, I still worry about him just a little bit because the production wasn't there. But from what I saw, he's a good catcher of the football. He's a good catcher after. He's a good runner after the catch. So it's a lot of things to really, really like about Tyler Conklin. That's going to make him a pretty good player within the NFL. But I don't know. We'll see. But I still think that out of the names that I saw, he's probably your biggest steal, and he has the best chance of being possibly, if if if. If not the second, he has a chance to be the best player from your draft class. It, it, that's how good I think that this kid can actually be and what I saw on tape from him playing in um, at Central Michigan. So, you know, overall, that's what I have. Your boom, your bust, your biggest steal, Minnesota Vikings. You know, if you didn't like what I had to say about your team and or if you think you have a different opinion of who, who is a bust, who is a boom pick, and who is a steal, please comment on the video so we can debate about it. Please share this video so other people can join the debate and we can build this draft community. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And please, if you really, really like the video and you want to see more from Draft for Authentic and you want to give me more ideas and if you want me to talk about the Minnesota Vikings a lot more, please subscribe to the channel so you can always get up-to-date information and stuff that I want to give to you people. Once again, this is Draft for Authentic. I thank you for watching. Goodbye.